Hello, everyone. My guest today is Miran Lulik. He's the founder and CEO at Super Money, a leading financial services comparison platform. Millions of people trust Super Money to shop for financial products and transparently compare their options in real time. Prior to this company, Miran was a co-founder at Loan Now, a direct online lender. He's also helped to launch Optima Tax Relief, where he led digital marketing and product development efforts as VP of Digital. In 2015, Optima was named the third fastest growing company in America, number one in financial services. Miran, are you ready to take us to the top? I guess so. Yeah. All right. Let me throw a question at you first. Uh, Betterment or Wealthfront? Uh, I mean, they're both good. I you can't. Uh, uh, both partners, actually. So uh, they're they're both good products. Well, from what I understand, based off what my research team told me, I mean, you help people make decisions on what to use. So when someone asks you which one do you use, how do you come up with a recommendation? Um, well, I mean, we we store. Um, more than any site that I've seen, more data on on different products. Uh, you know, for personal loan, for example, you'll you'll see everything from target FICO bands to uh, loan amounts, the to differentiators, origination fees, prepayment penalty fees, like anything that you could want to compare apples to apples. And so we have all that there um, transparently. But then we get a ton of people coming to the site and providing their qualitative uh, experiences, similar to you know, how they would with Yelp. If they're reviewing a, a restaurant or something like that. So we combine the quantitative dimensions with the qualitative and, and they can compare their options uh, right there. And we have a sort of, you know, a pretty, uh, you know, a, a good sorting algorithm that is weighing all these different factors and, and presenting them on our listing pages. Do you use like a questionnaire for new people that come to your site looking for a product so you can kind of profile them to help curate the recommendations you then give them? Or is it kind of the same recommendations for every person based off just gathered community reviews? Um, it depends where they land on our site. So if they hit a blog entry, um, well, if they hit say a listings page, uh, yeah, the light box pops up and we ask a few basic questions around, you know, um, what's your FICO, where, what state do you live in to, because, you know, not all lenders operate or whatever financial service product. It, it, it varies by state, by, you know, obviously the demographic of the, the user and everything. So um, we, yeah, we, we pre-filter those listing pages. If they've set anything through any of the forms on our site, it's cookie and tied to a dynamic user. And uh, if, they're, or if they're on a blog page and we have some sort of an offer table or whatever set up, um, all of those are all filtered. Um, but we also have these loan offer engines that we've been building out. Initially in the lending space, we, we launched our personal loan offer engine, and that's uh, integrated directly with a bunch of lenders. So we're collecting a whole loan app on our end, um, segmenting it and submitting it to, to multiple partners, and, and they're getting real you know, pre-approvals back, and they can actually compare real offers. And is that your biggest revenue model? You get a kickback as you're generating these highly qualified leads for these partners of yours? We're not on a, on a per lead basis with anyone right now. We're, we're on a cost per funded loan. So, um, yeah, it's our incentives are sort of aligned across the board with, with our users and with uh, our partners. So, um, yeah, when, when they get a funded loan, that's typically when we get paid. Okay. So, so is that your only revenue model or is there a SaaS component here or a sponsorship model as well? Like you can pay to go higher in their reviews. Any other revenue streams? Right now, it's it's all performance based advertising. Okay. We do have a couple in in other verticals. Um, you know, a couple guys who pay us per lead or um, per click. But um, most throughout most of our relationships are on some sort of performance based uh, revenue share type thing. And are you out hustling, negotiating those things one on one, or these banks come and just automatically sign up and accept your terms? Um, no, I mean, there's a lot of negotiation, especially with financial service providers. It's, uh, a lot of redlining and, and you know, that's pretty much the longest, uh, part of, of our onboarding process is figuring out the, you know, the, the deal terms. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, every, every relationship sort of different. Um, we do have, you know, a component to our sorting algorithms. It's sort of weighing in our, uh, expected revenue on a earnings per click basis. So we do have some sort of leverage in that way. And we, you know, the people who want more traffic, um, to some degree, if, if they bid more, they can get some more, but, uh, 
but in general, yeah, it's, it's a lot of one-off ne- negotiations. Yeah. So like I'm in right now on your website on the reviews for your money management section under personal finance. And when you go in here, it looks like a G2 crowd kind of, right? You've got like future advisor, money, spire, mint. People will know mint, obviously acorns, hello wallet, these kind of guys. And then they have kind of these, these reviews with like pricing and things like that. So, I mean, ha- some of these reviews are exactly equal, right? Like future advisor has 11, five star reviews. How, how would you know how to rank number one if someone else has like a higher volume of reviews but a little bit lower rating? Um, we use a Wilson scoring algorithm similar to uh, you know, Yelp and, and, and others. Um, Reddit, I think, uses that as well. It looks at the distribution of reviews and you know, it, it's more – obviously, somebody with one five-star review isn't going to rank at the top. So it, it, it is looking at that and – in giving a weighted score. And, What's the um, name of that? I've never heard that before. The Wilson ranking system? A Wilson scoring algorithm? A Wilson scoring algorithm. Interesting. Okay. So that is, uh, that helps with just, you know, the qualitative review distribution in general, but um, we also weight that in. We have a, a weighted scoring algorithm that, that factors in other things like uh, earnings per click and that sort of thing. So, we're, we, you know, obviously we're, we're trying to, Wait, what do you mean earnings per click? Like earning, like earnings you make per click you send them? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We we don't want it to be a complete pay to play model um, because the user experience is gonna be terrible. It's just if it, it, it's always you know uh, whoever's willing to pay us the most is appearing at the top, especially in sort of like subprime verticals. Typically, you know, somebody with more margin will push their way up to the top and won't really align. Um, with the you know the, the, the general market of, of what is the best option but at the same time we don't want to be completely on the other end of the spectrum where everything's user generated and we have no way to make money and that's right so, so we're, we're kind of waiting it it's definitely weighted more towards the user experience and uh, the user reviews um but yeah we, we do uh, factor in a few things yeah so if i click on future advisor which ranks number one in this particular section of money management tools and i click the visit site button under their logo you're essentially i'm making this up you're getting 30 cents per click or something that you send them um we, well we're not typically on an ecc like earnings per click model but um it will we we measure what it backs out to on an ecc and that's kind of a weighted factor oh i see I see. Got it. So you might you might have met the future advisor at their office on 505 Howard Street and they've said, hey, we got a great product. And you're saying, yeah, our organic feedback from our community has you with 11 five star reviews. We should work something out. I can send you more traffic and you'll work out some deal together and then factor you know, over a year how many clicks you send them and over a year, what do they pay you to get basically a weighted EPC? Yeah, exactly. exactly. In- interesting. So, I mean, this is these are a lot of deals. I mean, you have hundreds of tools listed on this thing. How do you have time to manage all that? Well, a lot of it is we go through networks. There's already, um, you know, especially if it's, if it's a vertical that we don't do a ton of traffic in, we'll, we'll just go to a network like Commission Junction. A lot of these guys will have performance programs already on like Impact Radius. And um, there's just a lot of different networks or, or places that they have existing affiliate programs. So we'll just typically grab uh, those, those links and, and run from there. It's just easier for everybody. Um, for bigger partners, we, we transition to a direct relationship at some point or for verticals that we drive, you know, a lot more traffic and we'll typically just go direct from, from the beginning. But, uh, yeah. I was shocked to learn when I started interviewing travel bloggers that the number one way they're just printing money is I did not realize the huge affiliate kickbacks that credit card companies give. I mean, I was shocked. Um, when you look at all your different sectors, which one of these are, like pay the most per traffic? Is it like the folks looking for new people to give debt to, or is it the credit card companies? Which one would you say they pay the most kickback for? Um, I mean, it's it's all over. The, uh, just financial services and verticals. Uh, like in in general, financial services is a big. Like it, pretty much, pick anyone. <laughs> they all are uh, uh, high paying, sort of. And and you can look at you know the, the Google AdWords um, average cost per click reports is a lot of them published online and um a lot of them you know pay a lot in tax relief some of these like get out of debt verticals are typically very uh lucrative on an epc basis but they're just you know niche tiny verticals so it's it's um it's kind of a balance of yeah like it's a very high value customer but very hard to find them so only you know not um the majority of sort of revenue but um, and then on the flip side, you have like personal loans, credit cards are, are huge, huge uh, markets. They also play, pay pretty well as well. So yeah, um, 
kind of all over the place. What's the, just give my audience a sense here. I don't remember what the numbers were when I interviewed some of these travel bloggers, but I mean, if you sign someone up for a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, I mean, I, th- I think you remember, I remember Matt telling me, I mean, it's like five, 600 bucks that they'll pay back to the, the traffic source for one, you know, qualified sign, new sign up to that credit card. Does that generally match with your data? Mm, a couple hundred. I don't think the credit cards are going really that high. There's probably some offers that are, um, yeah, maybe on the business side, personal credit cards to, Typically a lot, you know, lower than that. Okay. Uh, depends on the credit quality and the type of card. Uh, we have some as low as, you know, like under $10, um, and typically, you know, 20 to 50 or something like that. But they, for like a really good credit card, uh, offer that's, you know, being aggressively promoted. Yeah. You, you can get, you know, 100, 200 bucks, something like that. And give me more of your backstory. So what year did you launch the company in? What year? Uh, 2013, uh, technically, but uh, it was sort of a uh, side project, really. It was, it was initially, it was just like a personal finance blog um, for the most part, and we uh, seeded it with some content. At, at some point, we decided, hey, let's kind of try to create the Yelp of financial services. We uh, threw um, you know, a website up uh, for that sort of uh, that idea and um, seeded it with content. Nobody really went to it for a while. and eventually Google just started rewarding us. And at some point we realized, uh, Hey, there's, uh, this thing's kind of taking off on its own. So let's invest. Um, so how, more. how, how embarrassing was first year revenue in 2013? How low was revenue? Like a couple grand or a hundred grand, a million. Oh, I don't even know if we had any, yeah, it was like, or zero. <laughs> we had close to zero basically. I mean, and, and what did you grow it to when you said, okay, I'm seeing enough revenue from this thing where I've got the confidence to quit my full time thing and go all in. We were generating around like 20K a month or something at that point. Which is what point? What um, in 2016 is when we got a little more serious, mid- midway through 2016. Okay, so midway through 2016, call it, you know, 20 grand-ish per month is what you had scaled to, all just from these essentially kickbacks. The, the, there, you get the SEO juice because you launched, you put up great content, now you're getting the kickbacks. Now, have you bootstrapped this whole thing or have you raised? No, we, we've bootstrapped it. Um, you know, the partners, the founding partners have put in about, uh, just over a million dollars at this point in total um, of our burn, and uh, but we haven't raised any outside capital. What do you mean in total of your burn? So like our net um, invested is is just you know over just over a million dollars in total. Yeah, but when what do you mean at over burn? Or is what you're saying is in a month where you might spend more than what you make, the investors will put up more to cover that burn. Yeah, exactly. Like we're maintaining a small burn rate and. Really, it was, uh, you know, around 2016 when we decided, hey, like, this isn't worth investing. And we, we brought some engineers onto the team and we started really focusing on building out the platform more and, you know, building that loan offer engine and just a lot, a lot of different stuff we've been working on. What's your team size today? Uh, about eight full time employees and then a handful of, uh, sort of part time resources. We have a bunch of freelance writers who are, are part time and, um, you know, other resources that sort of, yeah, but in terms of just full-time employees, it's about eight people. And what do you use to hire these these writers? Do you use a network or marketplace? Um, it's kind of been more referrals lately. But at, at one point, we were using eByline. Um, e while, eByline. Yeah. E Y E line. E Y L. Yeah. Okay, got it. Interesting. We'll look that up. E by line for content. Um, okay, cool. And so, what have you uh, like over the ne- over the last twelve months? I mean, were you are you still kind of at that twenty k per month running? So you did about a quarter of a million over the past twelve months, or have you doubled or tripled that since twenty sixteen? No, we've been growing about fifteen to twenty percent month over month in terms of our top line revenue for the last year, and we're we're approaching about two hundred k right now. Yeah, um, which is still pretty small. I mean, we haven't we haven't really been focusing on scale and we've been building a ton of infrastructure behind the scenes. Um, hope, you know, th- this year is when we plan to, to start scaling up a little more aggressively. More monetization. Yeah. Now, would you ever go out and raise traditional capital or no? We will at some point we, you know, we've been aiming to get to the 10 million uh, annual revenue run rate before we raise so that we can raise growth capital. Um, you know, we didn't need, you know, early stage seed rounds and that sort of thing. Uh, we'd rather raise on, on better terms and we know that we can get there on our own. Um, so yeah, but that's how, the plan. Uh, what year, what, how many years do you think you need from today? So you have about four X or 200 grand per month currently to hit that 10 million AR run rate. When do you think you can hit that by? 
I'm hoping to this year. Okay. Wow. That'd be significant growth. If you hit that this year, that'd be really good growth. Yeah. I, I mean, we've, we've definitely we've done bigger than that in the past. So yeah. Well, I mean, going from a dollar to $2 and month over month is it's easy to double smaller numbers. It's not so easy once you start getting bigger. No, I'm, I'm saying like with Optima, uh, you know, it was like, I think it was like a 35,000 percent three year growth rate or something like mm-hmm. that. So I, I mean, it's really about setting up a scalable business model and then putting money into it to scale. Um, so it's, I, I think we're at this point now where we're, we're you know, about ready to like start investing in scale. And it, is the revenue very predictable? Is it like true monthly occurring revenue or does it really fluctuate based off partnerships you're closing in certain months? It's growing based off of, we've sort of been, our SEO footprint has been growing exponentially. So it's been growing, you know, just organic visits are coming to the site and, um, you know, that's a big driver. Our monetization has gotten a lot better over time. Um, just the, the breadth of, of different partners that we have, um, launching in new verticals. Like, so personal loans, you know, just was a vertical that kind of went after really well. And we, we set up a bunch of partnerships and monetize it really well. And there's still a bunch of verticals on the site that we don't really monetize that well. And, um, but now we're starting to get a lot more traffic and, you know, we're trying to catch up with that. Um, and then, yeah, new partnerships is, is always, uh, something that's right. And that hasn't really been a big channel for us, but a, a channel we're sort of putting a lot more focus in moving forward. Yep. All right, Miran, let's wrap up here uh, with the famous five. Number one, what's the last business book that you read? The last one. Oh, uh, I can't remember the. Well, actually, I'm trying to look at my Audible right now. Uh, I've been <laughs> reading. A, well, actually, it was Jason Calacanis' Angel, How to Invest in Technology Startups. Yep. I've Number a lot of non business books lately. <laughs> That's good. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, well, I like. Not Naval Ravikant is somebody I just see is really interesting with all the Bitcoin stuff he's talking about. Yeah, right. Angelist founder there. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have for building your business? Oh, I don't know. I use this, we use Sana a lot. Okay. Um, Sana is pretty much the, the hub of our whole company. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> like uh, probably six. six yeah, Damn it. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, have kids? Uh, married with twin daughters, eight years old. Ooh, okay, so you're a busy guy. How old are you? How old are you? <laughs> I'm uh, I just turned thirty six. All right, Marion. Last question: What do you wish your twenty year old self knew? Oh, <laughs> um, that's that's a uh, that's an interesting question. I that I don't know. Just keep grinding, grinding hard. You know, eventually it'll pay off. I think uh, a lot of people just you know aren't willing to put the effort into to keep seeing something through. And, and then there's this mentality of like, yes, you have to fail quickly, but um, at the same time, you, there's a balance there that you need to kind of just see it through. Yeah, guys, keep grinding, see it through. From Mirani, he founded this company, Super Money, kind of halfway back in 2013 when he launched, it kind of fiddled around for a little bit until it got serious in 2016 when they passed 20 grand per month in revenue. Today, there are over eight full-time employees and they have a bunch of freelancers. Uh, the founders have put in a million bucks just to cover burn and they've scaled about 200 grand per month in revenue, looking to scale that to that $10 million ARR mark. Hopefully by the end of this year, so they can go look at potentially raising growth capital as their SEO footprint expands when people are searching for any really terms related to financial services products. Miran, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you.